Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about NumPy. So in general, data analytics and machine learning, NumPy plays a very important role in doing all the mathematical calculations. So before introduction of NumPy and all other similar libraries of Python, so in machine learning or, or analytics need much more mathematics than programming. So in order to make that simpler, it means that so in order to reduce the dependency of mathematics in learning towards data analytics or machine learning, NumPy is the best library that is recommended. And NumPy stands for numerical Python. So why we need numerical Python? In general, a numerical Python or NumPy will deal with uh, most of the mathematical operations that we will do. And these were written as functions. So this is the official site of NumPy. And we will see the futures here like powerful n-dimensional machine arrays. So whenever uh, we talk about NumPy, we need to talk about arrays because NumPy supports array operations in a very different scale. It supports different di different dimensions, like it, the, it supports two dimension, three dimension, and, and it supports up to five dimensions. And we can also perform vector operations here. And the other thing, numerical computing tools. So uh, like it, it's, it almost, provides entire mathematical operations that we need to, to build a machine learning model or to analyze the, uh, analyze the data. So it provides various tools in build uh, with the help of some advanced functions. So it supports like linear algebra, routines, Fourier transforms, and many more mathematical concepts. And it is in interoperable. It, it, is, it has no dependency on CPU or GPU. Wherever you use, it can be so it can be supportive and it is interoperable with anything and performant. So it is the code is well optimized and with the flexibility of Python. So we can perform all the operations in a very quick and I mean feasible manner. And it is easy to use as syntax is similar to Python. So as we know, Python syntax is very easy and um, um, simple to use. So NumPy follows the same scenario. And the other thing is it is open source. So um, it welcomes contributions and it has a lot of uh, developer community too. So yeah, that's it about the NumPy. In the next video, we will go with we will go on hands on and we will start writing NumPy code. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the course. So in this video, we are going to learn about data types in NumPy. In general, NumPy supports much more data types than uh, what Python uh, actually supports. So uh, it, it has a I mean, greater variety of numerical types than Python. So it supports Boolean, integer, and in integer it supports 8-bit integer, 16-bit integer, 32-bit integer, 64-bit, 18 integer, unassign integer, floating point, so it supports everything and complex number. So we will start and uh, we will start and see what actually uh, how we declare a data type in general. So we will name it as NumPy D types. So let's let's import the NumPy first. Import NumPy as NP. So this is mandatory. And in general. Uh, we use something called dot d type i mean so let's declare a variable np dot d type you want to find out the data type of a particular variable so i will declare something like this np dot in 32 so i'm directly passing the 32 bit integer as one of my object of numpy array so let's see what it prints it has direct it has to print the data type as it is yes it is print it is saying that it was a 32 bit integer so now uh, let's see uh, the different different things that we will get um, in integers so in general there are four types of uh, integers that numpy supports int 8 int 16 int 32 and int 64 and these these are equivalent to we can also write this in the form of uh, or equivalent 
to some key some some keywords uh, in the sense so int 8 is equal to i1 int 16 is equal to i2 int 32 equal to i3 and in 64 is equal to i4 so if you want to try to access this you can use instead of using nt8 in 16 we can use these variables so let's see a quick example so that we can get a clearance so suppose i want to print the data type of uh, let's take it as i1 so i want to print a, i want to know the data type of i1 so in general what we know is i1 is referred to in i mean 8 bit integer so when i try to print this so it it returns in date similarly if i try to print i2 it returns i mean 16 bit integer similarly i3 oh sorry Oh, i3 cannot be accessible. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, now it is okay. So it is how it works in general. Um, if you want to print other things like, um, right. yeah, it goes on like uh, two variables. So i1 in the sense int 8 and into 2, i2 in the sense this one, not this actually. Yeah. It a power of two. It was equal into power of two in the simply. So it is how uh, we defined alternatives to integer signed integers. Uh, let's let's do a quick example. So there is also a notation called Indian note Indian notation. So if you want to print uh, exactly the same thing that we wrote inside the inside in the object place we will use the, some notation called indian notation we will use a symbol greater than here yeah, so simply like np dot d type we will use a greater than symbol followed by so uh, i want to print i want to know the data type of i4 but i'm using indian notation indian notation so guess what will be the output so the output is output must be the same the same one that we wrote inside because we are using indian notation here let's check yeah it prints the exactly the same thing that we wrote here it is how uh, i mean indian notations are used so now uh, let's create some a structured data type we will play with this data type so let's declare in numpy data type and you you place an array inside that i want, I want to declare the age and the age should follows the data type uh, 8 bit integer so like it is what i declared so if i try to print the dt so it should print something like this because we know right int 8 is equivalent to i1 and so that is why we will get this so now we will apply it to an array object so yeah applying to array in dimensional array yeah. let's copy this so now we have a data type which is uh, which has an object called age, which follows 8-bit integer data type. So now we will declare an n-dimensional array. And inside that write some, I want so one dimension kind of thing. So let's declare an array, whatever it is. And now you are passing the data type here. So instead of passing manually, we already have the data type declared, right? So we will just pass uh, this and now try to print the A. So it returns uh, all these arrays in the form of an integer and it is completely one dimension. So yeah, it is how uh, we deal with data types. Still there are uh, very, I mean, 
very much data types to explore. We can also use float and yeah. So in the next video, uh, we will go and check out some of the other concepts in NumPy. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the course. So in this video, we are going to learn about data types in NumPy. In general, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, hello everyone. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the course. So in the previous video, we have discussed about NumPy and why we need NumPy actually. So NumPy in general, use it in data analytics and machine learning for mathematical calculations and mostly we use numpy for arrays so in this video um, we will start uh, hands on on numpy so uh, let's name it numpy arrays so let's see how we uh, mean create a numpy array so before that so if you are using not other i mean not than anaconda so if you are using jupyter notebooks in anaconda then it is fine so if you are if you are working in in, I mean some other IDE or using some Python console. So you need to install NumPy. In general, to install NumPy, we use a command called pip install NumPy. Yeah, so this is the command we use to install NumPy. So if you are a first timer working with NumPy, so make sure you install this. And in Jupyter Notebooks, we don't need it because uh, it is inbuilt in Anaconda's IDE. So, but as uh, we install numpy in our system so as well as anaconda so, so we need to import that so for that we will write a statement called import numpy so this is mandatory in every numpy program you wrote so because you need to import the package because in order to uh, make sure that python understands what you are working on you need to import and in general we use uh, i mean we import numpy as np as it is a shortcut to import numpy so now numpy is imported so now we are ready to start working with numpy so let's start let's declare a numpy array so if you know uh, how lists and arrays are declared so uh, i think you have already watched already you know the python list as well as also you watch my previous videos so let's declare an array with np so here np dot array in the sense so array we are, em are embedding the array into the numpy so that it becomes a numpy array so let's declare a one dimensional list so we can call it as one dimensional array for now so now we have a numpy array so it is one dimensional so now we will print this So yeah, we, we got this, right? So now A is considered as a NumPy array. So let's see with an array, uh, let's take an array with more than one dimension. So let's take, uh, we are using two dimensional arrays. So, so it is also same, but we are adding one more dimension to that. So make sure, so you put those two dimensions inside an array, I mean inside a list. So here, it's, it is something like this. They don't confuse here. So I am declaring two array, I mean, two dimensions enclosed in a single list. So it means that uh, the number of dimensions, it doesn't matter. It, it is an, it, as NumPy supports n dimensional arrays, but make sure you embed everything inside a list. Now, uh, if I try to print a, So yeah, it is how it prints. So it is actually a matrix kind of thing. So we can call two dimensional arrays are matrices. So it is how it works. And also uh, we can enclose, I mean, we can, we can tell instead of writing this under a list, we can also use a concept called 
a minimum i mean we can declare minimum dimensions uh, see how many dimensions our numpy array should take we can also uh, control that so similarly uh, the same thing we can also write something like this so i am writing uh, my one dimension array but i want it to take two dimensions suppose if i want something like this then write nd min I mean and it was it is like it was saying something like the minimum dimensions you need uh, your array to uh, print so i am i want something like two so i want my numpy array as two dimensional array so what happens here is so if we try to print a yeah so it is enclosed in another array so it, it means like array inside an array so it it, it acts like a two dimension array now but actually if we declare something similar to the one dimension array so you can also use that uh, remember to use end min so instead of avoiding the confusion also there is a concept called d type parameter in numpy arrays we will see how it works so d type parameter in the sense so i mean in which type you want to print so you want to print as a complex number type or simple number type it, by default it takes as a simple array so if you want to print your number as a complex number so how you can use it let's consider this np dot array so i am declaring two different arrays I mean, it, it it was a two-dimensional array in general. Or oh, wait, I will tell you with the single-dimensional array so that you can get. So I want this to uh, to be printed as a complex number. So completely, it should print something like a complex array. So what should I do now? Yeah. So now, so. Each and every number in the array that we declare is now a complex number. So yeah, it is how we we create numpy arrays and we print numpy arrays. So in the next video, we will see some advanced concepts. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome back to the course. In this video, we will look into uh, different array attributes of NumPy. So array attributes are like uh, some of the functions uh, to perform some operations with NumPy array. So yeah, let us name it NumPy array attributes. Yeah, the first step importing the NumPy. I will import numpy as gmp so now i has an uh, numpy so what what are the different things that we will get so we will see the first thing is uh, array dot shape and then we can find out the n dimension array shape by using this method so yeah let us check how it works so it, it is it is nothing but uh, when we have a matrix we will find out the size of the matrix right whether it is 2 into 3 or 3 into 4 in the similarly if you want to find out the size of the numpy array so here we, we will call it as a shape so we will use nd array dot shape so let us have an array let us declare an array so i'm declaring a two dimensional array so now i have an array 
so i want to find out the shape of an array shape of this array so i will simply use the method called a dot shape so a is my n dimensional array i am using the method called shape so it is 2 3 2, which means 2 into 3 Uh, so yes it has i um, mean two rows and three columns so it is giving the same thing and we can also do go and experiment with different things i will also write it is 3 into 3 now and there is also uh, we can also resize this uh, it was like so suppose let us copy and copy the same array so we will define a shape of the array so i want my array uh, to follow 3 by 2 now i will print it so in general it is a 3 by 2 oh i'm sorry yeah it works now yeah so one thing about reshaping is so let us name this method as reshaping reshaping uh, it reverses suppose when we declare it 2 by 3 array so it is possible to reverse it as 3 by 2 and if it is 6 by 5 we can reverse it as 5 by 6 but we cannot do like 6 into 6 as 4 by 3 or something like this so yeah now it is a we all know it is a 2 by 3 array now we are reshaping it into I um, mean, three by two array. So we want that as to display as three by two array. So when we try to display that, it now has three rows and two columns. In general, it has two rows and three columns. It is how reshaping works. Now uh, there is a option called n dimensions. So we will see that method. So. it is used to print the number of dimensions that we actually actually want so let us declare an array and i want 24 values to get printed in this i'm not de i'm not declaring array exclusively here i'm just giving the giving out the number so let's see how it prints yeah it is print. so i want i i want this 24 so now there is a method call arrange so in general if we print 24 it takes as an object it takes as a number and it prints as a single one dimension array now we will use a method call np dot arrange now it arranges into 24 or different objects starting from 0 to 23 so it is a method uh, that is that is popular again okay? so we will use it to we will use it to reduce the manual intervention in displaying values and yeah and also we if you want to find out the dimensions here i mean the number of dimensions that it has so as it has only one we will get it something like this and there is also one more concept called reshaping here again so suppose i am reshaping an array with the following dimensions now i am printing b yeah i print something like this uh, it is now a three dimensional array in which uh, we all know right what a has a has a one dimension array a is a one dimension array with 24 values now we are reshaping it into a 2 comma 4 comma 3 which means it is it, is, it, 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 it contains three different dimensions and yeah it is it is how uh, we can perform different operations here uh, there is also an another array attribute called item size we will see that what actually it does this array attribute returns the length of each element of array in bytes so let's see an example so i have an array here so i am defining a data type so 
let us suppose it is a 32 bit or like it is uh, simply an 8 bit so we want to print out x in general it displays the first array so now let's print using the item size method so it displays it returns the length of an array it should be one because we have only a one dimension array and it returns the same in bytes and yeah it is how uh, it works so let's took the same example and we will experiment that with another data type let's suppose it is a floating point now it displays something like this now you will print the item size method x dot item size now it is 4 it is how it differs because you all know right uh, it displays the size according to the bytes as we are using 32 bit so here in the above one we, we are using an 8 bit data type so 8 bits in the sense we will have a one byte here we are using 32 bits which means uh, 4 bytes so it is how we need to understand this so these are all the different array attributes that we use to uh, simplify different operations with uh, numpy arrays yeah thanks for watching uh, in the next video we will see some more concepts in numpy